that's being described by the the industry, by the medical industry. So you had questions. Now coming into COVID, did you have those initial fears or questions about the vaccine? At the very beginning, I had a little bit of skepticism about the efficacy of the vaccine because we know traditionally vaccines for respiratory viruses like influenza are not that great. But I didn't, so with all of this knowledge and background knowledge, I honestly treated vaccines or the word vaccine like holy grail. Despite all of this stuff around over-medicated population, all these pills people are taking, whether it's blood pressure pills they don't need or statins or even diabetes drugs that don't have much benefit for them um, and come with side effects. For me, still within all of that, vaccines are amongst the safest. So I never conceived of the possibility at all, actually, of a vaccine doing any harm. Even knowing that this is a completely different vaccine that, that has nothing's ever been distributed like this yeah. with these numbers. So, so I know that now. But at the time, you know, I hadn't focused my attention specifically on, on the vaccines at all. So you're, you're, what you're saying makes sense. But at the very beginning, you know, um, I, I, was, I, I deferred to vaccine specialists and immunologists and people I thought that, you know, didn't probably have conflicts who were all saying this is fine. So I hadn't looked at it in that much detail. And I just made the presumption that this was going to be safe. Don't know how effective it was going to be, but it was going to be safe. And as a result, um, and some of it was also... You know, so during the COVID pandemic, uh, I was very outspoken making the link between obesity and poor COVID outcomes. Uh, in fact, to the point where, you know, I was getting pretty mad that there wasn't enough coverage on this. Like we've got this pandemic that affects, you know, disproportionately affects the elderly. There's no doubt about it. At the very beginning, it was particularly devastating for older people. But there was like a thousand fold gradient difference in risk if you were young versus old, like even now, even early on, you know, John Ides, Jay Bhattacharya, you know, they did these analysis essentially suggesting that for younger people, it was actually less lethal than the flu. But for older people, very old people, it was, it was, it was quite bad at the beginning. So I, I noticed this link with obesity and I said, listen, you know, this is my work over many years. One of the things that I also advocate for is that to, for people to understand that if you change your diet just within a few weeks, depending where you're starting from, you can potentially even send your type 2 diabetes into remission you can reverse the most important risk factors for heart disease. So I knew that if, if people were told that when this, when this virus was, you know, when the pandemic started, this was an opportunity. Actually, we already had this slow pandemic of chronic disease, which we hadn't effectively curbed anyway. This is a great opportunity for government to say, listen, guys, now it's, this is a time to sort your diet out, take vitamin D, you know, really just optimize your immune system. And it wasn't happening. So, but in all of that, I looked at all of the risk as well. And um, it was clear that this was, you know, not very risky for people who were my age, you know, um, 20, I'm 45 now. So what, I was, what, 43, uh, you know, 42, 43 when, when the whole vaccine rollout started. My father, who was a um, retired general practitioner, but vice president of the British Medical Association, very prominent doctor in the UK. Um, he, and, and this gets into the emotional side a little bit, because, you know, I think this, th this is, uh, is relevant. Um, he was very keen that I take the vaccine. And I think it was because he had an exaggerated fear for me, right? Like many people had. Um, we'd lost our mother just a few years earlier. I lost my brother when I was young. So I was his only surviving immediate mem family member. And he had this, and he was seeing me need to take the vaccine. No, please, please, please. I said, like, dad, you know, I don't really need it. You know, no, 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 take it, take it. Just went back and forth and I said, okay, fine. I'll, I'll have it. But I, I thought anyway, as a doctor, I'm going to take it. I'm going to protect my patients. You know, let's see what happens. So I took the vaccine. And then about a month later, a film director, friend of mine, Gurinder Chadha, you might be familiar with some of her work, um, Bend It Like Beckham, it's a movie she did, Blinded by the Light, which is about Bruce Springsteen. It did quite well over here. So she was sending me all this stuff, saying, I see him and watch about the vaccine. And it was kind of blogs. And it was stuff saying like, you know, microchips, depopulation agenda, fertility problems. I said, Gurinder, to be honest, I was polite. I said, I don't think there's any real good evidence here. I think this is scaremongering. And I said, you know, I think you're high risk. You're type 2 diabetic. You're overweight, et cetera. I think you should have it. So she said, great. You know, she trusts me. So she took the vaccine and then she tweeted it out. And the next thing, I'm on Good Morning Britain in February 2021, asked to tackle vaccine hesitancy, which was higher amongst people from ethnic minority backgrounds. I think it's probably similar in the States as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that as well, by the way, Joe, is that a lot of people from the, those 
those backgrounds are from poorer backgrounds and um, understandably they have less trust in government you know they're the neglected people in society in many ways so you can see why they felt that way and I went on Good Morning Britain I didn't point fingers and said oh my god these people are crazy whatever else I said listen let's understand that there are rational reasons why people don't want to take the vaccine look at the history of the drug industry for the last several decades and the amount of fraud I, I think they weren't expecting me to say this right. I said think about all the fraud they've committed um, I understand that. But I said, having said that, when you look at traditional vaccines, they are some of the safest. And that's kind of m- pretty much where I left it. At a time, Joe, when we were only in the UK, a- at that point, there was only the recommendation for the vaccine to be given to people at high risk. I never expect, even then, like friends were calling me and young people said, no, you don't need to take it. If you're under 50, you're fit and healthy. No, no. Even at that time. But this is just for high risk people. So I took it. Uh, I swallowed the pill. And, um, and then, yeah. I mean, things changed very dramatically within a few months. Do 